Hey guys, I want to talk to you about Provo Canyon 2021. Um, I made a video earlier or before, but it was really dark. I was in my car. Um, and then I just felt like I needed to re-record this. So I just want to talk about um, some of the kids. Like, I noticed that when they talk about breaking code of silence or, you know, all these other ones about, you know, their parents sending them there, they failed to talk about foster care kids being sent there, a lot of them. My nephew is one of them. So when I first heard that he was going to this school, they made it out like it was like this glorious, you know, school where he was going to get education and like it was all good. And as soon as they said Provo Canyon School, like my stomach started hurting. I was like, Provo Canyon School, why does that sound familiar? And, uh, and then it hit me. It was the one that you guys were all protesting about five days before my nephew went in. My nephew went in on March 26th. Um, if you guys see me looking down, it's because I got notes, like, literally right in on my little desk here. Like, on my desk. Um, so, anyway, um, I just want to play a couple of these videos to kind of show you guys what my nephew has been telling me. Um, first off, like, they did what they did to a lot of the survivors. My nephew had no knowledge of what was happening. Um, he was taken into CPS custody, uh, because my sister was having some mental health problems. We had a court hearing, and boom, they took him. They didn't even let me say goodbye or anything. So, my nephew was placed there for two weeks with no communication to the outside world. And I, uh, I wrote him, they said I could write him a letter, so I wrote him a, a letter, and I drew a little picture of Stitch, like this, you know, and, uh, I said, don't worry, little nephew, like, I, like, I'm gonna get you out of there. Well, uh, everybody has made it impossible for me to get my nephew out of there. Um, I've done the home study, but that's just taking, like, God off along. Um, even when I've requested them to, like, bump up meetings or, you know, because they have to come. They're not going to come here until the 8th, 15th, and 22nd. And that's when I'll officially have my foster care license. You have to do that because I'm, um, an out-of-state placement. Meanwhile, he's not being moved from Provo Canyon School in any type of way. Um... My sister, it, it kind of makes it difficult because, you know, my sister's in a really vulnerable state right now um, because she's just been having a lot of problems, and I just feel like they're really taking advantage of her her state of mind, you know, like making it out like this school's really good for him and, and he's going to be, like, so much better and all this stuff. And, you know, she's co-signing. You know, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I met them. I met, I met them, too. I met them. And I see through it all. It's very, very clear. And what's clear to me is my nephew's body language when I Zoom with him. What's clear to me is all the survivor stories. What's clear to me is he's reverbing some of the same things that the uh, survivors were saying in the video. And all these people, including like his counselors and the CPS people... They were all making it out like I was just overreacting like a helicopter, you know, like, like, oh, this is good for him. This is good for him. Um, what's not good for him is him being isolated from his family for two weeks and thinking no one knew how to find him. He literally said, how did you find me? So for two weeks, he was sitting in there with no communication to me or his mom or anybody and didn't think anybody knew where he was. Um, that alone is like just really traumatizing to a 12 year old child. Like my nephew is 12 years old. Um, the other thing is, you know, towards the middle of him being in there, he started calling it prison. Um, okay, if your school is so great, why is my nephew calling it jail or prison? The other thing that's not okay is the fact that, like, you know, when he's talking to me on these Zooms, he's constantly looking up over at somebody. 
So he'll be like, yeah, auntie, da 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 da. And he's scared. Another thing I've noticed is he's fidgeting. Like he's he's always like his whole body looks like something's wrong. Like he's always like, yeah, and yeah, and uh, and like looking over, looking over, like he's gonna get in trouble. Now I've already watched all the documentaries, so you know it's like it's not like I haven't done my own research to know outside of that. Like it's like you don't have to be. You don't have, like, I went to school for social services. You don't have to be a social service major to know that putting a foster child, whether it be my nephew or any other foster child, in a place where they cannot call out for help. They can't call out for help. So, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. Like, even prisoners can call out for help. They, um, they can't call out for help. Uh, they were isolated. Uh, he or he was isolated. Um, a little bit later, he had told me he'd been assaulted by another kid, and he was trying to defend himself, which I'll I'll be playing those videos in a second. And then he told me staff assaulted him. When uh, you know, I was watching his documentaries about how you guys were medicated. My nephew, I asked him instantly, "Hey man, are you being medicated?" And he said, "No." I'm just on fish pills. I'm not on medication like the other kids or whatever. And the person in the background, I can't see them, is like, oh, you're not being medicated? Oh, oh, like, like, and I'm like, you, you piece of crap. Like, I already knew at that very moment that they were going to medicate him. Next thing you know, he's being medicated. Not only is he being medicated, but he's being medicated with a psychotropic drug. So some people say that, oh, they use Respital for ADHD, stuff like that. First off, my nephew has never had any type of diagnosis like that. Let's start there. He does homework at my house, and he literally gets in front of the computer, opens it up all by himself, very responsible, and sits and engages in everything. Like, he sits, he brings his laptop to my table, like my kitchen table, to study like he could have done it on the couch or or laxed or played video games no he brought it to the table and was doing his thing you tell me why you just diagnosed him with some 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 stuff he doesn't have another thing is um so you know i was a caregiver respital is a really serious drug it's it's, it's under like a psychotropic class i think um the only time I've ever seen Respital prescribed was with, like, people who were, like, very uh, disabled. Uh, maybe you guys have some other comments about what you were prescribed it for. Um, but, you know, looking it up, it says, you know, severe bipolar, severe mood disorders, um, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Like, that, that, that was the one that pissed me off the most. Like... So you prescribe this drug for people with schizophrenia and, like, and what is that going to do to him later? Like, who are you to just, like, boop, here's these drugs. So I just want to um, play you some of these videos, you know, so you guys can kind of hear it. Um, this was... Let's see the one to JJ. I want to show you the one to his little friend so you can see where he's... Hey guys, it's new group chat, da 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 da. Um. Because she said girls are big, bro. That's not the You one. know what, though? That's okay for you to say that. Maybe that just means we all need to spend more time together, that's all. Because she's your family. Let's see. No. Oh, yeah. Tell her I said thank you for the animal. Okay. Sure, I love her. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing some stuff, you know. That could be Aunt Patty. Aunt Patty and Uncle Tony have a boat. Is it somebody? Okay, let's, um, I'm just saying this, but what's the blow on where? 
Okay, so here's the, I'm just going to start playing these ones. So this is, so my nephew has already, you know, been trying to advocate for himself. So here's one. He's like trying to be his own mini lawyer. I was about to video call my um, caseworker on a visit. Mm -hmm. And apparently she didn't answer, so that was a waste of time for me. Mind you, my nephew didn't do anything wrong. Uh, he was in a whole nother town and got taken into CPS custody. Like, why is he being punished, right? Fights because of that. Because I've I gone through a lot of couple fights, but... So in the beginning of this, this is saying part of it, but he was saying that he was getting in fights because kids were basically picking on him about his story. And that they were just like kind of bullying him. It got, I never threw punches though. I, I, I just pushed him. So, so he came, and you know, and to defend himself. He didn't throw any punches, but he pushed him away. Pulled me back. So then he said staff put hands on him. And once I kept on going, I got when he was trying to get away from their, the like, kids trying to fight him. Holdings and I almost got it until the guy came up. The staff came up and then. He shoved me in the wall. So pushed staff really tight, was sort of hurt, but came up, shoved him in a wall, pushed him on the wall, which is really tight and hurt. Okay. With, uh, with oh, so this is me making sure that I can communicate with my nephew. And they're trying to tell me, oh, we can only do group sessions with family. When I'm in Zan the whole time. Also trying to, you know, work with CPS to get him out. because we do first sessions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for any, in case you call me, I would have to ask them and see what is the situation. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm definitely blood-related, so. The, it, depends what, uh, it depends on what, uh... It depends what CPS says, what the okay. state says, what CPS says, right? So, tell me why after I reported Provo Canyon School... So this counselor said, it depends on what the state said. I reported Provo Canyon School for uh, my nephew being assaulted by staff. And I also reported them for medicating him. Because I felt like that was malpractice. Um, so after I did that, they switched counselors. And then they cut all contact with me, stating that they can only do one visit with his biological mom. And basically now, um, yeah, now, now I can't talk to him in any type of way. Um, they said that he could write letters to me. I could write letters to him. I haven't gotten a letter. And I also mailed him, like, little letters with, like, stamps on it. So he could, it was my address and everything, so, like, he could do that. Um, so they said he had to earn that, but they're liars, and I know that. Like, I've been doing okay. I've been under yeah, a lot of stress. Like, Thank God for my pills. Oh, your fish pills, or you have something else now? I have something else, like these small one low pills. Thanks. So now they're medicating them, which I already knew they were going to fucking do. I mean... On this video, he says, is that weird? I mean... And I have to, like, watch what I say. Because if I say, weird? spit them out. Spit them out. I mean... I personally... Like, for, for me anyway, I think that it's better if kids take stuff like that when they get a little bit older. But, um... You know, because cause I've been getting in fights because of that. He said he's been getting in fights because of the medication. Or whatever. By the way, before this, my nephew didn't have any problems with no kids. Like, he didn't have... He wasn't, like, fighting nobody. Wasn't He wasn't, like disrespectful at my house when he comes over here he takes out the trash 
you know, he's sweet, takes out the dog for me. Like, he's, he's such a sweetheart. He does beatboxing. Like, he's just, like, the chillest little kid. So now he's telling me what you guys told me about when the kids in stables fight, staff will let them fight, and you can hear her in the background shushing him. And I can barely, like, listen to this video because I, I know my nephew in the way his voice is starting to elevate. Like, it's really upsetting because they're making it out like he's a liar when other people have said the same thing that went there so and he would have never known that sometimes when you get in fights there the staff just leaves you to fight no they don't so sometimes in the background no they don't no they don't that's what I heard from them Within this uh, video, he was just, like, really getting, like, upset and um, just having a really hard time because, you know, like, she just kept shushing him, shushing him, shushing him, you know, calling him a liar, calling him a liar. And, I mean, it's like that every time I talk to him where he's looking over at somebody or being shushed. Um, so that, I mean, that alone gives me a huge indication that something's wrong despite his breathing, the way his body's moving now, the way he looks, um, it, it, it really, like, breaks my heart. It, it, it really messes me up, and I've done everything I can think of to get my nephew out. Um, I even, at one point, just drove down. I'm from Tacoma, Washington. I drove all the way down to Utah because I just lost my mind that he was even put in there, and I, I kept saying, what did he do? Like, what did he do? He wants to be out of there. Like, and, you know, he just said, I just wanted to be with, like, a mom and dad or something until you could get me out. You know? He was just really stressed out. And my nephew, sometimes when he's going through stuff, he likes to be, like, have his alone time. And so, you know, when he was in the group homes, he wasn't all the way getting along because he was just really adjusting. Like, he had just been through so much crap. And not only that, like, you know, a lot of, like... The family, you know, they don't, you know, they've taught not to trust, you know, CPS or people like that. So, you know, he goes, he goes into Provo March 26. You know, I played the recordings. So, after all this has happened, I just, I just want to make something clear. A lot of people have said, you know, don't make these videos. Why are you making these videos? Get a lawyer. Get a lawyer. Okay, well, if anybody can find me one like a real one that will work, please feel free to email me. My email is trishaleon25 at gmail.com. Please email me because I have done everything I can think of to bring justice for my nephew. And the only thing it got me is cut off from all contact with him. The one person that was listening to him, advocating for him and trying to get him up out of that piece of crap school. So, you know... If you guys want to know what I've done, I read in little because, I mean, the list is just gigantic. Um, I wrote breaking code of silence. I talked to two lawyers that told me I was wasting my time in Utah. Um, I wrote breaking code. I wrote Michael Moore, Paris Hilton, uh, Kat Von D. I wrote Jessica Miller, Boise News Tribune, Judge Andrew Ellis, the one that made my nephew go in there. Uh, Michael K. Mc, uh, Mc, McCall, Amanda Slater, uh, Caroline Larson, Senator Davis, Tacoma UW Department of Law to see if the students could help me, Utah CPS, Doppel Licensing Department, DSHS here, DSHS Utah, and DSHS Idaho. 
Uh, somebody named Alicia Butts, Hannah Davis. Uh, I met, I contacted Jesse Jones, Paul uh, Tabor, Josh Taylor, Emily Shaw, Kyle Light, uh, Debbie Perkins. Uh, uh, I can't even say this name. Peter, Peter Mansfield or something, or Mansfield, or Mansfield, or something, Heather Barnes, Spencer Cox, Utah Governor, um, the teen treatment at Stribe.com, uh, who, uh, who else, who says they, in oh, the teen treatment at Stribe, who says they investigate these types of things. They don't. They're liars. Uh, Sasha Kraft. Um, that was somebody from Wrestlers and Tesh Law Office. Uh, that one, Wrestlers and Tesh says that they, uh, they sue people in boarding schools. All of a sudden, did, uh, they said it's for sexual abuse and extreme abuse. So my nephew being slam uh, slammed isn't um, enough enough for them. Uh, my nephew being wrongfully imprisoned isn't enough for them. There's not enough uh, money for them apparently or evidence. I don't know. Uh, I also wrote breaking code of silence, which there's hashtags about it. Why aren't we all getting together to help the ones that are left in there? Why aren't there people getting like fake glasses and infiltrating the bitch like? I just, it's its frustrating because there's this, you know, hashtag, you know, breaking code of silence, but it's just a bunch of people talking about their problems, and I thought that, you know, it would be more about, you know, people banding together to do something about it. I've also uh, did KTUBV, or something like that, or KTUB, I, um, I wrote a bunch of, uh, what are they called, uh, Latter-day Saints, because 60% of the population in Utah is Latter-day Saints, and said, hey man, like, you guys have all these churches, can you please help me do something about this? I have written every law person, I've, I've put my my emails and all that on the, the law forms, like a, a crap ton, a crap ton. So, I mean, if anybody can find anybody, like, that, that... Phew, like, you know, I, I was looking up, like, a civil, civil law lawyers, you know, and thinking, like, okay, well, his civil rights have been broken. And there was a really, really uh, famous, famous guy that I really wanted to talk to, which is famous, um, civil rights person. What was his name? Like, oh, Benjamin, I think it's Benjamin Crump. He was helping, but he's in a case right now. So, you know, he, um, who did he do? Oh, but this is, you know, his, his ones are like wrongful death, you know. He did, uh, Benjamin Lloyd. But I'm like, okay, so these are for, like, wrongful deaths. Like, what is it when you taken a child, put them in a prison, isolated them for two weeks, drugging them for stuff that they've never uh, had any type of diagnosis for, um, not letting them come home to their aunt with a clean clean background, and his father wants him to come here too. So it's like, you know, and I, I did all this stuff. I don't have a background. He can come to home. He can come home. You know, he doesn't want to be there. So why is it that you guys can do all this stuff, like CPS or whatever, and there's somebody right here that's his family that's saying, hey, like, I'll take him. I have a whole room set up for him already. So, like, and now they're talking about the same stuff this other girl said on her documentary about how, you know, like, she got in there. And then, like, they were convincing the parents that she needed more time in there. They're now trying to do that with my nephew. Uh, if they do, I'm going to organize a, like, protest. 
Um, I got it on the end of June is when I would do it. It'd be, um, the protest would be Monday the 28th, hashtag save Logan, because I don't know what else to do. I've contacted every lawyer. I've tried to write newspapers. The only thing I can think of to do next is like, I don't know, like a hunger strike. Like, do I need to like chain myself to a building? You know, but then it's like at the same point in time, if you do stuff like that, what are they going to do? They're going to say, okay, this person's um, unstable. Like, she can't take her nephew. She uh, seems crazy or unstable or whatever. But really, I'm just trying to fight for my nephew, like, for his rights to get him out of there. And, like, the fact that he, you know, had staff put hands on him. And the fact that, you know, like, once I wrote the licensing department about his little medication that they're putting on, they cut all contact and tried to be like, oh you know, new counselor, whatever, but the lady says right here, when she was talking, the other counselor before said, oh, it depends what CPS says, and that seems to be the trend with these people, so he was taken into custody, Idaho, but he's in Utah, and so you're like, okay, well, why doesn't Utah CPS have custody of him, right, it doesn't make sense, so now what the little game that they play is, Oh, it's out of our jurisdiction. So when I asked Idaho CPS why they never investigated my nephew getting hands put on, because they're supposed to have like a 24-hour window. It's like 24 to 72-hour window to investigate abuse of a child. And she said, oh, I, I, literally the supervisor, supervisor, oh, well, I hope they're not doing that to your nephew. What do you mean do you hope they're not putting hands on my nephew? Like, like hold on, what do you mean you hope? Like, you guys didn't investigate? Oh, no, that's not our jurisdiction. You were supposed to call Utah CPS. And then once I call Utah, they say, oh, it, it's been a few days now. Did, did he show you marks? Well, how is he supposed to show me marks if there's a lady sitting right next to him going, don't you dare? What is he going to do, pull his shirt up on a Zoom meeting and show me his bruises? Like, no, he didn't show me marks. That's why you need to go look. That's why you need to go look and check and make sure he's okay. Like, you guys put him there. You're supposed to keep him safe. And the whole time, he's telling me staff and students are putting hands on him. 12 years old. The other thing I don't like about it is, you know, like I said, the phone call. You can't call for help or nothing. And he was telling me, tell me I said, uh, you know, I asked him if he wanted me to tell anybody stuff. You know, and it's like, he's like sending out like messages from the ether, you know, hey, tell Aunt Patty this, tell my friend this, tell blah, blah, blah. And then he says, tell my friend JJ, I want to play when I get out of prison. So, I just want to say all the people that I've written, all the judges, all the, you know, all the, the governor of Utah, and uh, Judge Andrew Ellis. Like, let's start with Judge Andrew Ellis. If anybody sees this, please look him up. Somebody cool and techy and find out why he keeps sending children to Provo Canyon School. Because when I went down there, like, I went to the courthouse later on. And I start talking to people and trying to get, like, little inside info. And they said one of the judges there is known for sending kids there. So if it's... Judge Andrew Ellis of Idaho, Adam County. Anybody that's got information on that, let me know so I can blast this guy. If, uh, you know, anybody knows Spencer Cox, Utah governor, I want to know if governor, um, you know, I want to know if Spencer, the governor of Utah, has pockets in Provo. I want to know, because I wrote him twice now. The first time he sent me somebody from CPS or whatever, like a, a higher up in CPS Utah, so he was trying to help. He actually was the only one that answered me. But I want to know if all these people in power that I've written, I mean, it's a long list. I write somebody every day. I'll watch, like, one of their little court things, and then I'll write down every single name, and I'll try to find them and write them. You know, I've, like, specifically looked up the newspapers from uh, that little girl that got injected 17 times or whatever at Provo Canyon School. 
and I looked up who wrote that newspaper. I contacted that person. So, I mean, even the list that I just read off is, is small compared to, like, the ones I've really done because a lot of them you have to go on their website and write it. And no matter how many people I write or who who I contact to get him out of there, it's like everybody's like, oh, our hands are tied, our hands are tied. Well, if you guys care, especially breaking code of silence, I've written a lot of you guys. And, you know, I'm so sorry for what you've been through. And the only thing I can say is if y'all went through this and you're finding the courage to band together, do something. Do something and help the kids that are left because they got a lot of foster homes or foster kids that were going there because of the pandemic, which is why they sent my nephew there. And then they're in contact with the parents who were either abusing them, neglecting or whatever. And those are the people advocating for those children that are in there. And they got nobody. The person that was already messed up, not making good decisions, is the one saying, sure, they can stay in longer. I'm going to go pop pills. Sure, I can stay there longer. I'm going to go do the heroin, or I'm going to go do whatever, or I'm going to keep letting, uh, you know, Joe abuse, ju abuse me, or or I'm going to, or the, the kids that were abused by Joe, or the kids that were abused by mom, are getting put in Provo Canyon School for the school to abuse them too. And then the school's calling mom, or Joe, whoever's abusing the kids in the first place, being like, hey, is it okay if we, we go ahead and put them on a, I don't know, schizophrenia medication, or, or this medication, or that medication, is that cool? Sure. Those kids were already being abused by those people. Why are they making those decisions? And they're stuck. They're stuck in there. My nephew's stuck in there. And I have done everything I can think of. So breaking code of silence... I am, like, begging y'all, like, to do something about that pain. Take that pain and turn it into power and band together and rally some more. Kids are not for profit, man. Kids are not for profit. Foster care not for profit. And I want to know if Spencer Cox, Utah governor, or or Judge Andrew Ellis, and if, if you both, sirs, hear me, I want to know... If you guys got your hands in Provo Canyon School or if they have funded y'all to be governor for next year, especially the judge. Utah and Boise, Idaho is very small and the church is the major like population there. And I also want to know if you're a real Saturday Saint or Latter-day Saint, then why are you guys allowing, if you guys, there are so many churches of Latter-day Saints in Utah and Idaho. Boise, Idaho and Provo, Utah. There were so many, I've never seen so many churches in my life. If you guys are so church community, you know, why aren't you guys taking those foster kids and helping them? And, and you know, you want to teach the word of God, you guys want to go help people mow their lawn.